Hi, Franklin Elementary School. Today, I have the distinct pleasure to talk to Andy Gullihorn. Andy Gullihorn is a local singer-songwriter who writes some wonderful, wonderful songs and some lyrics that really, really uh, have touched my heart over the years that I've gotten to know his music. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. And big shout out to Mr. Rigsby. Thanks for making this happen, man. So without further ado, here's Andy Gullihorn. Andy, thanks for joining us today. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing well. Um, so I've been asking uh, different musicians the same three questions. And I just wanted to ask you that today for our students at Franklin Elementary School. And the first one is, um, who are your favorite musicians growing up? Who'd you listen to? I would say very early on, I think the first concert I ever went to was Dan Fogelberg, who maybe your students will have no clue who he is, but he is kind of folky singer songwriter. And then, um, then I was really into Michael Jackson. And then after the Michael Jackson phase, I went into country music phase and I was a huge Garth Brooks fan. And then went from Garth Brooks to uh, James Taylor. Uh, and then to probably one of the guys who influenced me the most as a songwriter, David Wilcox, another folk singer. Um, uh, that's a, a short list. Um, there have been a lot of people who have uh, inspired me. Um, but I would definitely say David Wilcox probably has the, the most influence on, had, had the most influence on me as a songwriter and guitar player. No, he, he's one of my favorites too. I watched his uh, Facebook Live last night. Oh, I missed it last night. I, I saw he was on there. But no, his, his song, Breaking the Cup, anybody, anybody talks about marriage, I'm like, you need to go listen to that song. Yeah. That's a great song. Yeah. He's a master of metaphor for sure. He is. Um, so what's your favorite song to play today? Favorite song to play. Um, usually it is just whatever the newest song is I've been working on. So whenever I write a new song, I just feel like I have to play it, you know, a million times to, work out the kinks in it and see if I like it. Um, so there's uh, a, a new song that I enjoy playing. Um, and then there's one I'm working on right now with a friend that I've been playing a lot. Uh, that's still in the editing process. Um, that's a really vague answer, but, but the answer would just be like, whatever the newest thing is that I'm working on. Although I will say, um, I started doing these things called uh, coronagrams where people will um, ask me to video record me playing a song and then send it to somebody else. Like, you know, like a, either a message of, uh, you know, let them know they care about them or maybe they're having me send it to them as a punishment. I don't know. I don't ask them why they're having me send it to them. Um, and most of them have been, you know, just my songs. I'll say, oh, will you send this song of yours to so-and-so? I'm like, sure. And, um, but my wife said that we would do cover songs, which I, maybe wasn't the gre greatest idea. Um, and this guy the other day asked me if I would send one of Jim Croce's Time in a Bottle. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've heard this song before. I've never played it before. Um, I was like, oh, sure, I'll try it. And then realized it's a pretty intricate guitar part. Um, and so that's what I've been playing this morning, trying to learn it. And it's, it's fun. I, I don't actually learn other people's songs that often. So that's the one actually today that I'm, uh, I learned how to play and I'll probably play for the rest of the day before I try to record it. That's, that's really cool. Um, I, I was, my wife actually kept playing the other day um, the Light a Candle song that you do. And so I pulled out a guitar and figured that out. It, it's fun to play. It's a, yeah. it, it's a gorgeous song. So, Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then uh, what advice do you have for our students? You know, if they want to keep studying music and music ends up being a passion of theirs, what would you, uh, what kind of advice would you give them? Wow, that's a 
a good question. And actually, you know, a lot of people, you know, older than your students' ages, but you know, later in life, they're I'll meet them on the road, and they're like, "Hey, I want to move to Nashville. I play music. You know, what advice do you have for me?" I think the advice for them would be the same advice I'd have for your students, um, and that is that. Uh, there will always, especially in this town, there are just so many great musicians. Um, uh, one part of the advice is that not to live in a scarcity model. So um, there's plenty for everybody. And just if somebody else is excelling in one area, it doesn't mean that there's less space for you to, to do what you do musically. There's, there's room for everybody. So I think it's important that it's a supportive, uh, not like competitive uh, or at least cutthroat uh, kind of world, the music world, the, the art world. Um, there's room for everybody to bring what they have. But uh, if somebody's interested in doing music in the, in the long term, and maybe this is the same with music or not music, I don't know. Music is all I've ever done. But um, I always just say to, um, I mean, be excellent at your instrument at your craft but as much as it, it as much as it is important to be excellent at your craft it's also important to be uh kind to people um you know when when people come to town they're like oh, i'm a drummer i'd love to get some work in nashville i was like well that's great there are a ton of great drummers in nashville and if you don't actually care about people and treat people with respect uh and kindness then Nobody's going to want to work with you uh, because they, when it comes to people hiring somebody to go on a tour or, you know, play on a record, it's like, oh, well, there are a bunch of drummers that we could use for this. Which one do I like being with? Like, which one do I feel like treats people with respect? Which person is, is a kind person? Um, so it's important to be good at your craft, but it's also important to care about people and not care about people for the end of having more work. Um, but I just think the importance of being a well rounded, uh, kind neighbor uh, in your community is is uh, as important as being really good at your instrument but they're they're both really important um, of course there are people who do music for a living that aren't very kind um, but I just don't think it would be worth it I don't think it'd be worth uh, trying to do that without uh, being able to have a community of people that that you love and trust and that love and trust you. Um, so I think that's, that's not really music advice. Maybe it's just life advice, but um, I have found that's one of my favorite things about the Nashville music community is that, um, you know, uh, it feels like a, a family. And in a time like this, where most of the musicians I know, including myself, all their work cancels for, you know, you're out of work. Um, there's really not fear in it because um, I mean, I've been doing music for 20 something years and you're used to adjusting and you know, that there's a community of people that will support you and it's not a scarcity model. So there's, there's enough for everybody and we can get through it together. Uh, how does that answer hit you in your experience? I think that's a great answer. Um, it, it's one of the reasons why I will sometimes let students take me on a tangent uh, uh, when we get into character issues in class, it's like, no, this is just as important as um, you get, you singing the right note. Um, so I, I agree with you. I think it's one of those things that gets overlooked. It's like, hey, you're going to have to spend a lot of time with this person in a studio, on the road, um, or just even playing around town. Be kind to each other and do it genuinely in a way that um, other people know that they're cared about. Hmm. Um, so no, I, I a hundred percent agree with you on that. It makes total sense to me. Um, so yeah. So. I don't know who knows if it'll make sense to, to, uh, you students out there. Um, I'm sure it does. I'm sure you guys are all super nice and being very kind to your parents at home while you're in quarantine and minding everything that they say and being very, very respectful to the people in your home and cleaning up and doing all the dishes so your parents don't have to do them. That's the other part of advice that I would say. 
Yeah, I've heard that doing dishes makes you a really great musician. Something oh, about yeah. the hand muscles. Totally, totally. It's uh, and it keeps them moisturized. Yeah. Um, I need to show this to my own kids. Yeah. Or at least so, teach them that. I, I can send you th this video as soon as we're done, and that Good. way. Hey, look, the guy on TV said this. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure. I'm sure they'll listen to it if it's me on there. Yeah. I don't know. I agreed with you. That might help. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, a complete stranger that doesn't teach them. That's always beneficial. That's right. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. So no. Uh, th there's actually a great, uh, there's a poem uh, in the Mr. Rogers book behind me about, hey, remember that your parents were once kids too. Mm -hmm. um, and th that, that's a nice little resource. Um, I'm trying to remember if I've recorded that one for the kids yet. Um, Fortunately or unfortunately, it's not that hard for my kids to remember that I was once a kid too, because I'm pretty immature, and sometimes they have to like rein me in. Yeah. Um. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe sometimes it's not. I think most of the time it's a good thing. Uh. So, um, thanks for joining us today on this, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Uh,